couple of things I want to share. There's so many things that are happening so rapidly and quickly, and, and these visions that are just coming um, about the train and everything. And uh, Did we record that by any chance? Did you record that prophetic word that I was, that was coming? Yeah. Okay, good. Praise God, I'd like to hear that again. Oh, happy days. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Second Corinthians chapter three. <clears throat> you know, uh, and as you really begin to see what's happening around us, there's so many, so many things, so many people being taken captive that were once free and now taken captive and that are been taken captive and still in captivity. And you know what? The one thing about captivity is people don't know they're in captivity. Amen. Um, and, and, and in this, place of, because uh, that's what we're going to talk about, taking captive and how the enemy takes us captive. And again, the only really way out of captivity is to sow your way out. Amen. You must cooperate your way out. Confession and, and, and sowing your way out. But one of the things that we got to begin to realize is what about captivity? What is, there are fruits of captivity. And one of the things of captivity, why there is so much captivity is because of the lack of the mind of Christ. It's the lack of the mind of Christ. And while we were worshiping, I saw this strange sphere like. And what was connected to it was power. It had no form. It was just like a round. But there was so much power coming from this, like, lightning bolts and just, but it wasn't fearful. It was pleasant. But anyone else that would have looked at it who's not connected to Christ would have been feared. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, this is my mind. It's connected to everything. And he said to me, Jesus was the mind of God. And so, in other words, I saw Jesus in another form. In a powerful form. It wasn't the area, the image of the his return where he's going to come with a sword out of his mouth. And this was another form. And in this, it was his mind, God's mind, that held everything together. Every piece, it was like lightning. It was holding all pieces of everything together through his thoughts. His mind held everything and he said that one of the things is captivity is caused by lack of my mind. Lack of my mind. Lack of the mind of Christ. There's so much false imagination. There's so much captivity. So much emotional captivity. All of these things. You know, one of the things is many times the enemy attacks in our imaginations in so much way that people can't align themselves. They rely on more of their imagination than they do what God says. They remind, rely on more on what they feel than what God says. And, and in this captivity, God is trying to break not only us loose, and it doesn't mean that, listen, there's a difference between partial captivity and full captivity. 
you may be taken captive in certain parts, but not in other parts. Amen? One of the things that we know that there's a false freedom in captivity. You know, if a child is born in captivity, they don't know what freedom is, and they think captivity is freedom. When a person is born in captivity of religiosity, because the enemy uses everything to bring people into captivity. They don't know what captivity is until you get free. And so I think, I really believe that this is one of the things the Lord wants to release today in us in the area of not only recognizing captivity, and breaking out of captivity, but assisting those who are caught up in captivity. Amen? 2 Corinthians 3, 12. Let's speak it together. Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. Unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. For their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. The veil is an indication of captivity. That means where there's a veil, there's a captive. In this, he's talking about it's a blinded mind. Blinded thoughts, blocked thoughts, thoughts that are not associated with God. It says, but their minds were blinded for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. So that means they're still in captivity. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. Now there is the process in Christ where the veil is taken away. It is a process in Christ. As your cooperation is with Christ, the veil begins to lift. Now, one of the things the enemy wants to do is replace that veil and bring us back into captivity again. It says, but even to this day when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. So they are convinced that they're free, but yet they are in captivity. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Again, to remove the veil is a process. And sometimes it could take an individual a long time for that veil to be removed. Again, the veil is an indication of captivity. It's a blinded mind. It means it blocks out the thoughts. It blocks out godly thoughts. It's unable to discern or connect to the life of truth. It's blocked. Listen, it, when it says it's, uh, it's, it's it's unable to discern or connect to the life of truth. This is not just knowledge of truth. It is the person of truth. It's different. Jesus is the Christ. One of the things that he is the truth. What happens when this veil comes and this person is taking captivity, do, they do not grow or mature. It puts a stunt to their life. They can stay childlike forever until it is broke. Now, there's a difference between ch being childlike in Christ. We come to as a child as humbleness. But there's a difference in maturing in the mind and the thought pattern. Becoming mature, not going backwards, but going forward. So when a person is taken captive, they are not able to mature. They must sow their way out. They must cooperate with the Spirit in getting out. There must be an exchange. If there's no cooperation, the person begins to go deeper back instead of going forward. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, taken captive.
Again, a veil is the indication of captivity. It's a blinded mind. It blocks out godly thoughts. It's unable to discern. It's unable to contact, make contact to the life of truth. And it stunts the transformation of growth. 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. But we know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, right? For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of captivity, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Why? They have been taken care of. Listen, the category isn't all of them. It's any one of these. Any one of these that is mentioned in the word here that an individual is still connected to and reacting to has been taken captive. These individuals have all been taken captive. They are living a life of captivity. Watch this. For this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible, gullible men and women, loaded down with sins and led away with various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. In other words, they can't get free because they're in captivity in the area where they know truth but they don't know the person of truth. Amen. There is a, an imaginary relationship, not a true one. Is everybody okay? Now, Janus and Jabez resisted Moses, so these also resist the truth. Remember, it's blocked out. When a person is taken into captivity, godly thoughts and truth are blocked out. They are men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith because they don't walk in faith. They walk in lies. They walk in assumption. They walk in imagination. They walk in false hope. It says, but they will progress no further. For their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. Does everybody understand? Taking captive individual, those who have been taken captive, these individuals are being used by darkness to bring captivity to others by using worldly or demonic instruments. They use worldly and demonic instruments of influence to veil the minds and hearts. Of who? Mankind. Against the person of truth or of the truth who is Christ Jesus. See, there's a difference between a lot of people say they know Jesus. I, hear, I see a lot of people say they know Jesus and they're in captivity. If you know Jesus, you're not in captivity. If you really know him. You're brought out of captivity. Because if you know him, then you follow him. And what's being exchanged is the mind of Christ for your mind. The heart of Christ for yours. Everything's being an exchange. It's a process through cooperation. We are in a time right now where we are seeing so much captivity. These people are brought into captivity who proclaim to be Christians. I just happened to Google yesterday certain celebrities and so forth who proclaim to be Christians. Boy, are they in captivity. They're strong to their denomination. <laughs> They exalt their denominations. But they're truly not Christians. They claim to be Christians because they've accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but they're not Christians. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 2. To be a Christian, you're free. The veil's gone. You have the sound mind. You have a sound heart. You're following all the way. This is why, because the exchange of your character for the new one has been establishing. It's not only been established, but it's still now going into perfection. The, the exchange has been made. Now there's perfecting. 
Verse 21. Is everybody okay? Taken captive. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Well, if you're not prepared for every good work, then something's not right. Amen? And again, he says, um, getting cut loose, cleansing yourself from your past. We must have a desire to break away and out from our past and present attachments of these mind-binding and controlling influences that paralyze our senses. And we'll talk about that. It says, but avoid foolish and arrogant disputes. Why? Because it brings you into a place of releasing of breath. And now you're trying to prove one another. And you're trying to actually just say whose flesh is bigger than who, mine, you know. Whose flesh is bigger. But avoid foolish and ignorant, in, ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. Amen? Strife. Strife. Strife brings people into captivity. Disputes bring people into captivity. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility. Now listen, I want you to look at this. Not quarrel, but be gentle. Able to teach, patient, in humility. If you're not fulfilling these, you're in captivity. I'm going to say that again. Not quarrel, be gentle, able to teach, and patient. That means endure. In humility. If those things are not a fruit of your life, then there's, you're, you're in part captivity or you're completely in captivity and don't even know it. It says, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. And who is the truth? Jesus the Christ. See, so many times we keep acknowledging the truth as just knowledge. We've got to come out of the arena of acknowledging truth as just knowledge and acknowledging the truth as a person. Because many people know the truth and are not free. Because they don't know the person. And that they may come to their what? Senses. Senses means a sound mind. Senses is a sound mind. And escape the snare of the devil, which has brought them into what? Captivity. Having been taken ca <clears throat> captive to do the will of the devil. That's what the purpose of the, why he brings them into captivity. So he can use them to fulfill his will. Now listen, it doesn't mean that a person is totally possessed. If a part of your member is in captivity, he can use that. It only takes one part of your member for the enemy to use that. Anywhere he can flow from his side to this side, he'll use. Amen? It doesn't matter. It can be, but again, it originates always in the thought patterns and how you think. As a man thinks, so he is. So, and, and, and every part of your members, gosh, I don't know if I can go into this prayer. I want you to look at every part of your members as memory, thoughts, as a mind. Every part of your members has a mind. It has an emotion. It has a feeling. Every part of you. Because where there's a memory, there's a what? There's an emotion. Where there's a memory, there's a presence. Where there's a presence, there's an influence. There's a motive. So until these things are exchanged out in every part of us, the enemy will have influence to use us in that part and express it. Fear. Fear. Look at how many sweet people there are Christians and they still walk in fear. Fear is captivity. Big time. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception. Deception. 
We're going to talk about what really deception is. But one of the things, you and I were born in captivity. It's amazing how Jesus utilized all things in the Bible. You know, even when the Israelites were in captivity, everything associated with in captivity and breaking out of captivity. In captivity, breaking out of captivity. That's what this whole life has been about. So we, we're going from breaking out of captivity all the time, breaking the veils, coming out of deception, coming out of lies, coming out of the old character is a constant process all the time. But what we must be careful of is what we associate with to either reconnect those things, amen, or what we touch and agree with to reconnect those things so that you and I do not go back into captivity. Is everybody okay? Again, we, there, there must be a desire to break out and away from the past and present attachments. Amen. Why? These are mind-binding, controlling influences. And they paralyze the senses. They paralyze our senses so that we cannot discern They paralyze the senses of true reality of freedom. Which prevents an individual from cooperating to be set free from being a captive. Pride is another one killer. I know enough. Yeah, you know enough to keep yourself in captivity. I'm all right. Well, that just showed me right then you're in captivity. Ain't none of us all right. <laughs> it takes a heart of repentance, not justification. It takes a heart of repentance. True repentance is not justification. It is not blaming. Amen? Amen? It's saying, I need your help, God. God, help me. I repent for touching and agreeing. I repent. I am so sorry. I'd rather die than offend you. Romans 8, taken captive. Oh, happy days. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, verses 5 and 6. <clears throat> it says, Those who live according to the flesh... If you're living according to the flesh and you in captivity, yes. Set their minds on the things of the what? On the flesh. For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. That means selfish ambitions. Me, myself, and I. False imaginations. False fulfillments. False hopes. Imaginary things that are not true. They set their minds on these things. But those who set their minds on the spirit, which is truth, in the person of truth, live according to the spirit. They set their minds on the things of the spirit. So there's a difference. It says, but the carnal mind is empty against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor did it can it be? So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So those that are taken captive can't please God. Why? Because their minds are not correct. They're not aligned with the way God thinks. They're not aligned with the mind of God. There is a form of godliness, but there's still not an alignment. The carnal mind is the mind of captivity. The spirit mind is the mind of life and freedom. Listen, if there's not freedom there, then there's captivity there. 
If there's not peace there and there's torment there, then there's captivity there. We've got to really grab hold of this because the world is taken under captivity. And many of people are agreeing with it like never before. They're agreeing with it. They're accepting what doctors say. They're accepting what people say. They're accepting what these thoughts say. They're accepting all of these things of what is being said to them. And they're being taken into captivity. James 3. Oh, yes. James 3. In verse 13. James 3, 13. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? One of the things captivity always does is causes drift. Person can't focus, can't pay attention. There's a captivity there. It's like trying to pull a bow and arrow and keep an eye on that, what do you call it, the bullseye. You can't hold it there. Huh? Can't focus, can't stay there. They shoot everything else but where they're supposed to. <clears throat> Verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct. By what? Good conduct. That means godly. That means the mind is aligned with God, how God thinks. I mean, we can't get the fullness of how God thinks, amen? We blow up. But what he's given us is a sufficient enough. I mean, I asked the Lord, let me exchange my thoughts for yours. And I thought, geez, am I going to live today? But he knows what I mean. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in meekness of what? Wisdom. Wisdom from where? Above. Amen. Meekness. That's gentleness. Amen. Verse 14, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. That means the person is justifying. This wisdom doesn't descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. Ooh, that's a demonic instrument. Does everybody get it? Wisdom from below is a demonic instrument. Now look at verse 16, because this is the kicker right here. He's explaining what captivity is right here. But where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. Whoa! So, he just told us what happens in captivity. The fruit of captivity is confusion. He says in where there's confusion, every evil thing is there. Why? It has access. Every evil thing, every evil thing has access to confusion. It's an open port. Every evil thing has access to confusion. So his whole purpose, the powers of darkness, is to keep you in a state of confusion so that they can have access to you through everything. Why? Where is confusion? It's in the mind. It's in the mind. So where there's confusion, a man can't think correctly. Can't hear correctly. False imaginations. False fulfillments. Can't mature. Always immature. Can't progress. Can't grow. Bitter envy, self-seeking, exists, worldly wisdom. Number one thing is confusion. And every evil thing are there. 
or have access to the individual. Again, confusion is an unstable mind. It's uncontrollable. It's unable to discern reality from fiction. I'm going to say that again. It's unable to discern reality from fiction. To be taken captive is called deception. To be captivated, because what happens, a person is captivated by deception. They're captivated by emotion. They're captivated by multiple voices. They are unable to make correct decisions. They're inconsistent. They can't see things through. It's always a short-sightedness. Why? Because it's about bitter envy and self-seeking. And all evil has access. It says here, verse 17, but the wisdom that's from above is first pure. First pure. First pure. First pure. Pure. I'm going to say it again. Pure. Then peaceable. Whoa. Peace. No confusion, no torment. Gentle, not violent, not aggressive, not anxious. I'm going to say that again. Gentle, not violent, not aggressive, and not anxious. Willing to yield, that means denying of self. Full of mercy. Mercy. In other words, when you and I cried out to God, we said, Lord, have mercy on me. In other words, consider me. Same thing here. They consider others. They're full of consideration. They bear good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. It says, now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace to those who... Make peace. Again, they've been captivated by deception through the emotions, multiple voices. They're unable, they're uh, unable to make stable uh, decisions and constant or consistent correction, corrective decisions. They can't see things through. To be taken captive is a terrible state of being. 1 Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 33. First Corinthians 14:33. It says, for God is not the author of confusion. I'm going to say that again. God is not the author of confusion. So if there's confusion there, it is the devil, not God. He is the author of peace. Not the author of confusion. The devil is the author of confusion. God is the author of peace. So if there is not a sound mind there, then you know a person is taken captive by demonic forces. <laughs> Amen. Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. You know, sometimes you got to tell yourself, focus. Focus. <laughs> and remove that spirit of confusion. It 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or responsibility. Listen, if you're in confusion, you can't do this. If you've been taken captive, you can't do this right here. You'll jump around it. You'll say all kinds of things, but you won't speak what this says. And you don't have to go to the Lord and say, I humble myself before you. Puke. I am your humble servant. I can see the Lord just walking away. <laughs> You're my humble servant, huh? Like you need to tell me that? Hallelujah. Verse 2. <laughs> Do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Hello. Why? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and expose the will of Satan. <laughs> so there's got to, we got to replace the old way of thinking with the new way of thinking. That will take us so that we can disconnect from our past and be connected to the future, 2 Corinthians 6. Disconnect from your past and connect to the future. Does this happen overnight? Sure be nice. All things are possible with God, though. <laughs> Even when it does happen overnight, there's still got to be a maintaining of it. Even if it does happen overnight, there's still got to be a maintaining. Amen. You can't drift from it. You got to maintain it. Because the enemy is just waiting for an open opportunity to bring somebody back into captivity. That's his job. And he does it very well. Verse 14, do not be what? Unevenly what? Yoked. Yoked. To an unbelievers or together with unbelievers. It's amazing how many people still associate with people that are not walking right. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial, or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people if they do what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. That takes sanctification. And don't touch what is unclean. Don't touch what's unclean. Don't touch what's unclean. Don't touch what's unclean. Don't touch. What, what is unclean is anything that displeases God. What is unclean is anything that does not align itself up with the word of God. Anything that is unclean doesn't align itself up with the mind of Christ. It's all unclean. It's all unclean. And when you, we touch and agree with it, we bring confusion. So everything always originates because of the area of just agreeing with something. Let me share this with you. If you don't disagree with it, you have already agreed with it. Yes. Amen. Amen? Amen? So you must reject it or you've accepted it. Yep. Don't touch and agree with people, places, and things of, dem of the demonic way of life and the demonic realm. The fruit will always be confusion. It'll be disorder. It'll be lack of godly priorities. It says, if you will walk away, come out from these things, and don't touch these clean, uh, unclean things, then I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. 2 Corinthians 10. 
Oh, yes. Second Corinthians 10, verse 3. Do not touch and agree with people, places, and things that are a demonic way of life. Any area of confusion. Now listen, it, many times confusion isn't just about um, not knowing what to do. Amen. It's not having the directions or choices of what to do. I don't know if I can put this in common language. In other words, you may, you may have all of the things to make the choice of what to do, but you're not choosing the right thing of what to do, even though there are multiple choices. Amen? That's when confusion is there. So when you don't know what to do, you usually what? Wait. If you're a person that can't wait, then you're impatient, and confusion is a fruit of impatience. It's called anxiousness. Well, we could go here. I could stay here for a whole week and talk on this. Verse 3. <laughs> Glory. For though, let's speak it, for though we walk in the flesh, which is the old man character, we do not war according to the flesh or the physical realm. I sure desire that they would change some of this stuff. Because I think it bring, brings confusion to people sometimes. In the area where now they're constantly thinking about flesh, flesh, flesh. When one talks about the realm, and another one talks about the old man. But anyways. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to interpret. Amen? Verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or physical, but are mighty in God for the pulling down of what? Strongholds. And what's a stronghold? A memory lie. Now, does a memory lie bring confusion? Yes! Yes, because there's been a false agreement. It says, casting down arguments. Is there a constant argument in your thoughts? Yes. Amen. There's a battle. You must reject. If you don't reject, you've accepted. Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God or aligns itself with the truth and the word of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Can you read this with me? If you can't, then you're in captivity. Verse 6, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. That's simple enough, isn't it? Hmm. So you and I are walk and live in the world. We do. We walk and we live in this world of influence, don't we? But we don't war according to the physical realm. We war according to the spiritual realm. We war according to the Spirit and the leading of the Spirit of God. Again, everything is to refocus again and realign. Realigning, realigning, realigning ourselves up with the Word of God. But of course, you don't read the Word of God. You don't feed yourself with it. How can you align yourself up with it? Amen. It's impossible. You will be a person that lives a life of confusion. You know, it's pretty amazing that, go to Ephesians 5. I was watching uh, a hearing in the House of Representatives. And they brought a new witness. And the Democratic Party, who's the chairman, the head there, because they rule the House of, Re House of Representatives. So they swore in the individual. And when they swore in the individual, they skipped in God we trust. Or so help me God. You know, like laying your hands on the Bible, 
swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth shall help me God. They skipped, so help me God. Literally skipped it. And so one of the Republicans said, hold on a second. You skipped, so help me God. And that Nadler, the chairman, said, that's okay. And the Republican guy said, wait a minute, that's a part of our tradition that started from the beginning. And he said, we're not enforcing that anymore. So I want you to know how evil and wicked the Democratic Party is. They are Satanists. They are in captivity. And every one of their followers is in the same captivity. They are rejecting God. Think about that. And how many Christians are voting and promoting them I have no idea how much blood is on their hands. That party needs to be dissolved. This is nothing but a satanic party. I was blown away when I saw that. Ephesians 5, verse 1. Talk about captivity, huh? Let's read it together. Verse 1. Therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, don't want be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, and now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no what? Fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. So whose responsibility is to expose them? Ours. It's amazing how many people put up with it. They pet it. Taken captive. And thinking it's all right. Have no fellowship with it, but expose it. For it's even shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. So if you're not making it manifest, then you're not walking in the light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See, then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the what? The days are what? Evil, evil, evil. We must align ourselves with the ways of God's godly thinking in his word and in his voice. Again, confusion prevents true alignment. And confusion is Satan's deception, which is his greatest weapon. You can't expose when you're in a confusion state of being. Hmm. You must confess and sow your way out. You must repent to sow your way out. In Proverbs 3, we're going to skip along in Proverbs here. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Is everybody okay? A few more scriptures, but we definitely got to get this in because it's time. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 8. Let's speak it. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart 
and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him, and he'll direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Look at, if you're going to depart from evil, you've got to depart from confusion, right? Because doesn't it say where confusion is? All evil is? That's what he's talking about. He says it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Why? Because it brings sickness. It brings disease. It brings perish. It brings contamination. Fear of the Lord is to depart from confusion in every evil thing. If truly the fear of the Lord of God is there, you'll want to depart. Amen? But if you're in confusion, the fear of the Lord isn't there. Proverbs 16. Sixteen, sixteen. Proverbs sixteen, sixteen. Let's speak it. How much better to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He who keeps his way preserves his. So, why? Because your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, imaginations, your conscience. It's going to contaminate these things. Bring you into a state of confusion. Verse 18. Pride goes before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord... Happy is he. Proverbs 17. Now, this one's a cool one. It'll definitely keep you out of hell. <laughs> it says, whoever rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. Hello. This is a reality. 1713. 1713. Come on, let's speak it together. Whoever rewards evil for good, evil will not depart from his house. Wow. People are still rewarding evil and don't even know it. Remember, confusion will cause a reward to evil because they actually promote it and don't even know it. Man, I'm telling you, when I saw that uh, with the Democratic Party and that, and, I, and that's what came to me was, man, they're rewarding evil. That's why evil won't depart from that house. The most corrupt organization in the world. It's phenomenal to me. And it's not only here, it's globally. It's a global organization. It's a global political party. It's all corrupt. Hebrews 10. Twice. <laughs> Glory. Hebrew twice, praise God. Verse 11. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins himself forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. 
For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnessing to us, for after he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, and I will write them. And then he adds, Their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now, this is powerful because, uh, well, we'll go a little further. Now, where there is remission of these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. No one can remove the sin of the presence of evil except Jesus Christ. So all others are taken captive. Think about this. All others are taken captive to do the will of Satan. All these other religions. Does everybody get this? Every single organized religion is taken captive by Satan's kingdom. And it, why? Because there's only one who can remove the presence of evil, and that's Jesus Christ. Only one. So if there's a political party that does not acknowledge Jesus, it's taken captive. If there's a governmental party that's taken captive, that's not acknowledging Jesus. Anything that does not acknowledge Jesus has been taken captive to do the will of Satan. Does everybody grab hold of this? And then they will promote confusion. And they will put people in a captive state of being in their minds. Whether it's, look at the media, look at the music. If it does not Promote Christ, it's been taken captive to do the will of Satan. So you have religions, government, media, politics, organizations, businesses, all kinds of things that does not acknowledge Jesus the Christ has taken captive to do the will of Satan. And its purpose is to release confusion. Many are under this control of of satanic captivity, and they don't even know it. They live for it, they promote it, they're connected to it. Hebrews 3, and we'll close here. We must know this. We must acknowledge this. We must have a good understanding of this. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 3, 7. That's why no matter what, you, what you're involved in or what, you always want to find out what is the root of it, what's associated with it. Especially when you go work for a company. I'm not saying quit the company. I'm saying to find out. Make sure you're protected by their confusion influence or ungodly influence that's going to try to bring confusion on you. <coughs> Amen? And hope that God placing you there can turn things around there or you can bring some people out of that captivity. <laughs> nice. That's wrong direction, man.
Hebrews 3, 7. Hallelujah. Therefore, let's speak it. As the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in a day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation, and they said they always go astray in their hearts, and they have not found, known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold on to the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Well, it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who having heard rebelled, indeed was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses. Now with whom was he angry forty years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? To those who did, to those who did not obey. Who do, to those who did not cooperate with the spirit of coming out of this confusion. So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. How many of you know confusion will promote unbelief? Man, I'm telling you, it's just, it, it's such a ripple effect. It's incredible. But we must be aware of this. Amen? Amen? We must be aware of this. Taken captive. Don't let the enemy take you captive. And if he has, break out. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed that's been imparted today will grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that you will rescue each and every one of us today. Set us free from captivity. Set our families free from captivity. And establish your government and your kingdom and your person of truth in us and through us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.